Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who all learned the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honors, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and all sincerity, diligence, and truth. Peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect, which is the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel, staying in the Holy Spirit and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai to the best of your ability day in and day out. Um, so I just want to touch on a uh, topic, uh, Lord willing, it's edifying, uh, something I was, um, you know, the, the, the spirit, you know, put the Holy Spirit put on my spirit to speak on, um, centered around, uh, um, you know, the, the believing women. All right. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, brothers, um, as well as myself, you know, we um, we uh, uh, rebuke, you know, the, the wicked of our people. All right. Which includes the women. OK, but we do know that you have women that are, um, you know, trying to the best of their ability to, uh, you know, walk upright. All right. And, and, and be a um, a uh, uh, how would you say a um, a righteous woman? OK, <laughs> although, you know, you, you did have uh, Solomon say out of a thousand, you found none. But, you know, through Yahweh Shai, uh, you know, through the grace and mercy of Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, you know, there are women that are a part of uh, the elect, just like through the grace and mercy. Um, you have the men that are part of the elect as well. All right. So, um, you know, this lesson is going to be uh, toward the believing women. OK, because. You know, women have uh, their proper place. All right. They have their proper order. OK. Um, when it comes to relationships, you know, and, and when it comes to the dynamic of a household and even when it comes to, you know, being in the fold of your house. OK. And, and all of us, we must play our role and we must uh, uh, be in order, um, you know, to the best of our ability. All right. And um you know, you have the women that listen. OK, you have the women that, you know, uh, um, you know, watch the videos, you know, they're um, diligent and, you know, uh, being attentive to the uh, lessons. All right. To the, um, you know, the current events. All right. Uh, uh, things of that nature, which is all beautiful. But, you know, every now and then. All right. You get women that um, go out of order. OK, they get out of order. So, you know, this lesson, basically, like I said, is it's to the believing women to remember to uh, learn in silence. OK, to learn in silence. So let's just start it off. I want to start off with this scripture first in the book of Second Timothy three, verse 15. It says, and that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right. And, and, you know, as Yahweh Shai said, we all must, you know, uh, come uh, uh, when we come into the truth. We got to come as newborn babes. Right. We got to, um, you know, be reborn. All right. Desiring the sincere milk. OK. And the words that, are, that we are reading, the words that we are, are applying to our lives, which is the word of life, those give us uh, a wisdom which brings forth <clears throat> brings forth our salvation through faith in Yahweh Shai. So the, the the scriptures that we're reading, we have to apply them to our lives. All right. And first and foremost, the ones who are teaching. OK, because as Yahweh Shai said to many to, to whom much is given, much is required. So we know this. We know this. Uh, uh, the, these words, we know what is expected of us. All right, which is our wisdom, Deuteronomy fourth, fourth uh, chapter, six verse. The scripture tell, um, it tells us that uh, uh, these laws, statutes, and commandments, you know, make us wise. All right, which ultimately that wisdom is going to lead to our salvation through faith in Yahweh Shai. Right, verse sixteen says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction." for instruction in righteousness. Okay? All scriptures 
is given by inspiration of the Most High. And that is key. All right. That's something that you cannot uh, pick and, and, and nitpick at. All right. I want to follow this, but I don't want to follow this. I think this is, is something that is good for me and this isn't good for me. So I'm not going to apply this. No. All right. Everything that the scripture says that we should be striving to the best of our ability. Now, we know that we're in hell. All right. And as in the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, it tells you that um, in a time of need, we find grace. But when it comes to, you know, certain things that is within our ability and power to do. All right. We should be doing that because it is inspired by the most high and it's profitable. OK, whether it be for uh, uh, reproof, correction or instruction in righteousness. And that's the key because we all should be striving to be righteous, all right? Although we know that our righteousness is as filthy rags, we should all be striving to the best of our ability, starting with the man first, all right? And, 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 you know, in that order, from the man to the woman to the child, it says that the man of the, mo of the most high may be perfect because the man is the head, all right? So the head got to be perfect so, the, so that the whole body can be perfect. And the perfect doesn't mean, you know, without you know, any slip ups or without any uh, faults, because, you know, we all have faults in this flesh. All right. But through Yahweh Shai, the scripture says we are we are, are be able to be presented faultless before the throne. OK, but not just the man, the also the woman it says thoroughly furnished in all good works. Now, the thing with the woman. All right. And Tim, uh, Paul spoke about the, the works that a woman should do. All right. Peter spoke about the works that a woman should do. A believing woman should do right and the main thing you know especially because you have the the way that we teach now the lord has uh you know made it through the internet all right but remember the words the the church is the people okay remember the word church uh um means to call out all right or an assembly of uh, israelites okay a calling out all right, is is one definition, and another definition is an assembly of Israelites. Okay, so when you are calling out, that's through what? Through the 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 uploading of the videos. All right, these are these video epistles. Right, these are sermons that people are coming to listen to. So in essence, this is church. So that's the mindset that you got to have now. For the women, because you have women that listen, right? And women that are listening and learning. But every now and then, those women that are listening and learning, they get out of order. Okay? They're not being, they're not uh, uh, um, following the instructions that they were, that the scriptures, you know, tells them to do in order to live upright. Okay? So now let me get this scripture here, because like I said, this, this, this scripture right here is the main point. All right. This is first Timothy chapter two, verse 11. Now you read the whole, you know, not the whole chapter, but the whole chapter is good. But we start at nine, you read it on down. But 11 is the point. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. OK, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. It's very clear. It's very uh, concise. All right. There should be no reason why a, a brother, a teacher, an elder, a, an apostle and etc. should be having having to do specific lessons on women that are listening and learning. All right. Uh, um you know, uh, through, you know, the videos. All right. If you were following the scriptures the way that you should be, and it's very, and you know, it's very, it's a very simple thing. Okay. It's a very simple thing. All you have to do is learn in silence. You shouldn't be leaving long drawn out comments on any brother's pages. Okay. Now, if you want to, you know, say Shalom, if you want to say Thawada, you know, for the lesson, edifying, all right? And I always say, like, also, if you want to leave a, um, a article that you may have come across that could be edifying, 
that, you know, a prophet brother could use to teach, then that's fine. But adding on to any lessons that brothers do without permission is completely uh, uh, out of the order and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. This is Peter. This is Paul telling P telling Timothy how to how to how to have the the church orchestrated. Okay, how to have the people orchestrated, and he is being specific about the woman. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So when you come to a brother's channel, you're coming in essence to church, and therefore you are to be in subjection. You're not to be uh, uh, um, speaking out of turn, uh, out of order. You're not supposed to be usurping. Uh, let's read the sec second, uh, the next, the next verse. It says, "But I suffer not a woman to teach." All right, very clear instructions. You don't go to the church in in this day and age. The way that you're learning is through brothers channels so that is in essence the 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 church when brothers do live streams and you got people viewing live guess what whether it be 10 people 15 20 30 70 100 that's all a church at that moment you got the the speaker which is the brother that's going live the elder etc that's going live and then you got the congregation which are the people that are listening that are that have tuned in. So there should be no reason that a a true believing woman, because you do got these scoffers, you got these false believers that claim to be, you know, followers of Yahweh Shai, followers of uh, uh, of um, you know uh, any you know brothers churches whatever, but they're not in subjection. Okay, they're trying to teach. They're trying to. Add scriptures. No. Let's read 11 again. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. With all subjection. He didn't say with 75% subjection, but sometimes you don't have to be in subjection. Sometimes you can just do, you know, be, be, you know, say what you want to say or be how you want to be. No. All right. With all subjection. But I, because this is that, this is. That type of spirit is it was what this world teaches. It teaches that, oh, a woman can have a voice whenever she wants to. All right. She can speak her mind if she feels like it. That's the mindset of this world, which is the God of this world, which a true believing individual would know that that's adverse, the adversary to the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So if you are doing things that you have done in this world, all right, if you are presenting characteristics or uh, um, a, a mindset that is acceptable in this world, then you got to, do you bring that to, to the congregation, to the church, then you got to understand that, hey, examine yourself. Because if this world tells you that you can speak, you can have a voice when you, whenever you want to, then that has to be wrong in the eyes of the Most High, because we know that this world, uh, whoever is a friend of this world, is an enemy of the Most High. All right. So it says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. OK, and, and, and it's unfortunate that we have to actually go to, you know, get this remedial. But sometimes hey, you got to break it. You got to break it down to the to the atom. Go to the word silence. It says quietness. All right. It's descriptions of a life of one who stays at home doing his work. Hey, Paul spoke about a woman not being a busybody. It does not officious, uh, does not officiously meddle with the affairs of others. So you shouldn't be hopping from one channel. OK, making comments on a brother's video about. A video that he did on somebody else or going to a, a brother's channel and saying, oh, that other person said this, this and that. No, that's being a busybody. OK. It says silence, stillness, dissentence from bustle, 
or a language. Quietness is very, is very simple. Okay. But it, you know what it is? It's the spirit of this world that that old <laughs> that scripture says the old man. Well, guess what? It's the old woman that you haven't fully put off that makes you uh, get out of out of order. Okay. Makes you think that, oh, I can just say this. I can leave a 15 pay a 15 paragraph uh, comment and <laughs> and it's OK. No, it's not. Like I said before, there should be no reason why any brother is doing videos on specific women that claim to be followers of Yahweh Shah. Because in essence, you should be really a, a, a fly on the wall. OK, you should be a fly on the wall. You should be somebody that, uh, OK, yeah, this sister, all she does really just says Shalom at the water and, you know, she helps out if she can. Like that's it. You're the 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 reason why people mention you should only be for your good works. If you are a true believer. All right. It shouldn't be because you were you were being a busybody. It shouldn't be because uh, you were being a demon. You were leaving pages, you know, uh, paragraph comments on brothers pages. No. All right. If you were truly learning in silence with all subjection. OK, let's get this. First Corinthians 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. And that's why brothers have, you know, a very uh, uh, limited tolerance for any uh, for for anybody. But really, when women start speaking too much on common boards, on live streams, because this is a direct order by the uh, uh, the pillars of this truth. OK. Yes, uh, you got the 12 disciples. You got your how um, obviously how shy the 12 disciples. Paul was taught by how shy. So directly, just like the 12 disciples were. So this isn't something that is uh, uh, um, new. OK, this isn't something that we are saying. This is something that comes from really how shy, because like I said, Paul was taught by how shy. All right. Peter was taught by how shy. And through the spirit, we were taught by Yahweh Shai. Okay? So it says, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. You don't have permission. See, if you were in all subjection, you would be uh, um, you would be uh, uh, compliant with that. All right? If you want to, if you had a question, and, 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 the, and a lot of things that, through the spirit, I've been, I, I have noticed is that you have a lot of women who are believers that have husbands that be speaking. And that's completely out of order. Even if your husband is a non-believer, you should you need to first get permission <laughs> from your husband. If you have a question and if obviously if he can't break it down, hey, you better pray to your Havabashim Yahushai that. You that he guides you to the answers that you need, and really, all you got to really do if you got an answer about a specific topic is just type it in because 9.99999 out of 10 times, there's a there is a, a, a lesson on that topic, okay? Because the Lord has this uh truth being being uh spread in overdrive, okay. So let me read this again from the top. It says, let your women keep silence in the churches. Because if you're silent, then nobody knows you're there. What do they say? Quiet as a church mouse? Why do they say that? <laughs> because a church mouse, you won't know that you won't know that mouse is in the church because it's very quiet. Okay? It's when the mouse starts to make noise, it starts to be rambling, starts to, you know disturb. That's when it's like, all right, there's a mouse in the church. There's a mouse in the house. We got to get the mouse out. So it says, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law, uh, also saith the law. So this goes back to once again, second Timothy, the third chapter, all scriptures are by inspiration of the most high. That is profitable for doctrine. This is doctrine. This isn't a uh, a preference that you know brothers have 
This is doctrine because this is order. Okay, and the Lord in Scripture says you that the Most High is not the author of confusion. Everything, let everything be done in decency and order. This gives order when the women are silent, because if the women aren't, nine out of ten times, actually ten out of ten times, is going to cause confusion. It's going to cause a rift. It's going to cause unnecessary, uh, um, unnecessary dialogue or distraction. I should say unnecessary distraction. All right. So it says, and if they will learn anything. So if you're in church and you have a, you know, you need a, 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 under, a, a better understanding of something. If you have a husband, let them ask their husbands at home. Now, if you are unmarried and you got a question to, a, to the, you know, if you go on a brother's page, you need to ask permission first. The first thing you should do is say, I have a question. Is it okay for me to ask? And wait and to see if that brother, elder, etc. says yes or no. Okay? Once again, this is doctrine. Not our doctrine. This is Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai's doctrine. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. And like I said before, every time, any time that a brother sees a, uh, uh, you know, a sister post a comment that is outside of the water, shalom, um, you know, an exhortation of edifying video, okay, or a comment of um, an article or something to that effect, it's a shame. You get... In, in our heads, you are looked at as shameful, all right? I don't know in your mind what you're thinking you're doing when you leave in all of this extra nonsense, but in our heads, <laughs> we're seeing that as she's completely out of order, all right? She she ain't she ain't really uh, uh, um, about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right? Because you're speaking out of turn in church, and that is not permitted. It is not permitted for them to speak. Okay? So, one more scripture and we'll close it out. It says, 1 Peter 3, verse 5. It says, For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in the Most High adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. And like I said before, Sisters who may be uh, uh, believers that don't have husbands, you still are supposed to be in subjection to your husband. All right. You shouldn't be dialoguing or trying to dialogue or trying to have conversations above and beyond what is needful. OK. And really, there is not really much needful conversation that you should be having at all. Like I said, if you want to say the water, if you want to show appreciation, if you want to say I want to send a gift, all of that should be done with a permission by your husband. OK. That should be done by permission by your husband. It says, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well. So all of that old daughters of Sarah, daughters of Sarah. No, you only a daughter of Sarah is as long as you do well. And when you be start to be shameful, when you start to not be in silence, then you're not viewed as a daughter of, of, of Sarah. You're viewed as a, a shameless woman. It says, and are not afraid with amazement. OK, so once again, this is a, a, a exhortation or a reproof to the, the women that are believers that listen and learn, make sure you're listening and learning in silence. OK, I know in this world, in these modern times, that may be the one of the hardest thing for you to do. But listen, <laughs> just just be quiet and, and soak it all in. All right. Soak it all in. The scripture tells you it's uh, better when you come to the, the house of the Lord. Actually, let me get that and I'll close it out. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High, 
and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. You're not considering that you're doing evil by not keeping silence and being in all subjection. You're thinking that you're, what you have to say matters and it's important. No, you are, you are doing evil in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart, your mind be hasty to utter anything before the most high. So you got your feelings. You better, <laughs> you better say, nah, that's not, that's not what this is about. This ain't about what your feelings are. All right. There's the, this truth don't doesn't matter doesn't care about how you feel about something and, and you just gotta you just gotta express it nah that's that's not what church is for okay church is for you to get fed with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that you can be wise into salvation point blank period okay so it says for the most high is in heaven and thou art upon earth therefore let thy words be few meaning what that the order in the ways of the most high is above your ways. So if the Lord, the inspiration of the scriptures is by the most high and he says, be in silence, that is above, that has been more beneficial than for you to say something that you don't, is not needful for you to say, for you to put a comment that is not needful for you to put. Okay, so um, I ended there, Lord willing. This was edifying to the elect, all right, and to the elect women, because like I said, there are elect women out there, the true believers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Um, Lord willing, this is edifying to you. So with that, until next time, Shalom.